I am also very happy to welcome amongst us once again our former Vice Chancellor Professor Mandir Bihari, Dr. Mahendra Bihan Bandari, an awardee of Padam Shri, and whose leadership qualities, whose futuristic visions we have been exposed to when he led the university in his early years in 2005. We have had opportunities to listen to Dr. Bandari in the past in person, and this will be the first time we shall be interacting with him on this platform. We are all very eager to listen to him. He has proved that teachers never tire or retire. After having spent time in Lucknow at Sanjay Gandhi Postgraduate Institute as director, and then as the vice chancellor of King George's Medical University, he moved on to practice robotic surgery in Detroit, USA. And besides his expertise, he has been concentrating on motivation, on philosophy, and general ways of living. And this is what he sort of professes with a lot of passion. And Dr. Dalela, I'm sure, is going to expand more on what Dr. Bandari is all about. Today, we are blessed with the generosity of our former Honorable Vice Chancellor, Padam Shri Professor Mahendra Bhandari Ji, who joined us from United States of America. I request Professor Divakar Dalela, sir, to please introduce our today's guest speaker, Professor Divakar Dalila, sir. Thank you, Pavitra, for asking me to do this honor. What can be a better privilege than to pay tribute in regards to the teacher on the teacher's day? So, friends, I was thinking that about Professor Bhandari, what should I talk this morning as his introduction. Should I tell you about his coveted honors that he has in his kitty, like BC Rai Award in 1995, Padam Shri in 2003, or should I tell you about his administrative journey, which includes being founder head of urology at SGPGI in 1988, two path-breaking tenures of directorship at SGPGI, becoming our second vice chancellor in 2003, then the director of robotic surgery research programs at Vatikuti Urology Institute at Detroit in 2005, and finally, the CEO of Vatikuti Foundation in 2010. Or should I tell you about his traits as medical teacher that are ingrained in his heart and soul? Friends, he really believes in stimulating everyone around him to be on top of the pyramid as a professional. He has tirelessly chiseled all his students to be knowledge creators and not only be knowledge seekers. He led his people by demonstrating a personal conduct of full sincerity and not by uttering fancy words. To me, personally, he has been an epitome of principle centered leadership. He has always worked in the larger interest of students. He has talked about ideas, core human values, and life guiding principles, and never about people. Whenever and wherever he noted a tiny seed of useful idea in anyone's mind, may it be a student or a young faculty member or head of the department, he watered that seed with his full energy and resources. It is on account of all these Bandarian traits, be all his students make a beeline for him whenever you come to know that he's around. I put him in highest esteem as my mentor. I have the honor of being uh, his student. This, my association with him runs for more than three decades. He is truly my Dronacharya, and I take this privilege of asking him to deliver his talk on leadership in higher education to all my colleagues. Thank you very much. And I hand over to Professor Bandari for his talk. Thank you, Divakar. Thank you, Varun. At the outset, I take this opportunity to welcome General Puri on uh, a hot seat. Uh, 
it was much hotter when we started it but i'm sure uh, we will enjoy it i will pay tribute to two of my colleagues which are so ingrained in up and uh, the leading uh, people who i really was friendly for decades one is the late professor k m singh we had association for 50 years uh, 40 45 years to be precise and similarly dr d k chabda who was the uh, epitome of establishing sanjay gandhi post graduate institute i certainly miss and it's my humble i dedicate this lecture to them it's always privilege uh, for me to talk to uh, kgm you because it's a nostalgia and uh, it's really a pleasure to see old people old associations which uh, are truly my pride possession the title of talk i have dis discussed today because leadership according to me is misunderstood a lot and everybody has its own definition of a leader i am going to talk to you about a portable leadership uh, this is a term which has uh, uh, been recently propagated by Uh, the dean of the harvard business school uh, has written a review on portable leadership and that's where they have really isolated by studying the ceos of g to find out what leadership trait a person carries from an organization and what leadership traits are specific to other organizations so now this is one of the commonest leadership we encounter and that is uh, uh, political leadership where you have a leader and followers i don't mean that academic leadership is anywhere close to this definition of leadership but unfortunately these influences creep up in uh, in our uh, day to day living and that's what i would like my initial few slides i want to tell what kind of leadership i mean so academic leadership what i am talking of is a totally different uh, leadership and that's very relevant for an institution or premier institution like king george's medical university the expectations of academic leader is very high for two functions these institutions of higher learning does is one is we because of medical institution has to meet with our clinical responsibility which brings in whole lot of responsibilities to look after a patient and to present a public face of an institution contrary to that we nurture the best of the talent in the world and as you know at the level of super specialty and specialty training there is very little we can do in terms of didactic coaching most of it is they they learn by seeing what and that's why the teacher's behavior is very important when it comes to this and that is a different kind of leadership so what i am trying to tell you is a corporate kind of leadership where we don't need followers we don't need uh, followers we need leaders we need to lead leaders and that is what is important that is to be understood that it has to be a very different connotation from political leaders so what i am talking of invisible leadership and the best example i am sure i have talked and talked to your you at several locations and i must have given this example when i was a director at gpgi for a uh, professional commitment i visited iit kanpur and first time i was to visit uh, the director's office and i was i used to collaborate with computer science departments so i was there and you will not believe i asked several faculty members and students there to direct me to the director's office it took me 20 minutes because nobody knew where the director's office is and that became my ideal 
that an institution should have invisible leadership where the needs of stakeholders are taken care of. If you have to look for director, I know that theoretically it may be um, uh, possible, but practically it's not possible. What I mean to say, don't take it in literally sense of being invisible, but you have to make sure that you redress the needs of your community without your being there, uh, without their running after you. It's a very tall order to achieve, but at least one should strive at that. We have a kind of, um, it takes no time for anybody to pick up whether you are talking to a boss or a leader because his language would be, I did that, and I did that and all. And the um, moment it is replaced with we, which cannot be done, you can make a change in one sentence you say, but you cannot change the global change of your attitudes. Now, this is an important slide for you to understand what I mean by leadership. Leadership doesn't mean only when you become a head of an institution or head of a department. These are administrative connotations of leadership. I define that your leadership has given, been given an opportunity to prove are you truly a leader. This is first test when you write that kind of crest. But each one of us have a leadership element in us. And this is, even if you don't like to be a leader, you have to carry that mantle with you. Because human beings are bundles of attributes and we need to pay role playing is very important. Now see, as a student, our perceptions are different. Our needs are different. Our expectations are different. Same thing changes when you are a teacher. And then, as a student, we add something to the core of what you call um, um, bundle we have. All the fibers in bundle like fiber optic are not transparent. Some of them would be opaque, bad qualities also. And then you go higher up and you have institutional leader. And then you go still higher and you may be fortunate to have a national role or international global role or societal role, but ultimately it is one individual. Now, the usual problem, I'll come cutting corners to it, is between teachers and team leader like head of the department. Or sometimes it could be a specialty person heading an institution. The trouble is that it is very difficult to change the role. Person, moment he becomes head, he continues to be competing with his people. And that is the worst thing which can happen. So, the role changing is very important because and this is Herman Hesse has said a very good thing. Some of us think holding on makes us strong, but it is letting go. I met many of my colleagues and uh, they continue to be head of departments. I would never leave ex specialty even if I become head of an institution. It doesn't go down my thing that by holding on, how one becomes uh, much more wiser than somebody, but this could be a different perception altogether. This is uh, in corporate world. We have always uh, bad bosses. I, I don't think, in fact, uh, there are bad bosses, which is, uh, it's only your perception. Because most of the time as human beings, if somebody doesn't agree with our viewpoint, which is not all the time sacrosanct. We keep changing. We have a right to change our viewpoint. We have explanations. But if somebody contradicts that, he becomes a bad person. So first thing is, you have to really introspect and see, is there a truly a bad boss? Or is it something which uh, is your perception of a person? So again, my recipe is even if you have a truly a bad uh, person to report with, 
don't let it happen to you these things because no individual to my mind has a power to steal your brain power your productivity innovations and motivational skill and uh, hence why do you want your health to suffer you have to figure out take them as one of the most difficult exercises of your life so that you come stronger with it and i can tell you that you would not regret so the conclusion what i drew for my career is that i am not what happened to me i am what i choose to be each one of us have to make a choice impediments would be there in organization outside the organization and until there are impediments your levels of skills to surpass those boulders would be stunted hence we have to really make sure that everything is within and to speak ideally for a true leader there is no other person exists this is something which you would know that um, age old uh, what you call uh, crucible and the history of crucible is there is a place by the name of hesse in germany where they make these crucibles and the crucibles are as you know alchemists used to use for um, holding material with high temperature to make ordinary metal to a gold crucible has to go mind you all everything goes in crucible doesn't get into gold it is destroyed similarly in the career of a leader these are the crucibles he has to cross and every time he passes through a crucible i am giving my own life's example king george's medical university i remember the date very well it was 13th march 2003 12 hours after i was suddenly i asked that i have been appointed as vice chancellor and i was driving from sanjay gandhi post graduate institute to take over the charge of the institute and i knew for certain because i existed coexisted with this institution and i had interactions and life in sanjay gandhi was totally different than king george's medical university i expected so i didn't expect the Uh, bed uh, of roses here but i never knew that i am entering the biggest what you call crucible of my life but i think in it turned out to be one of the best periods of my life which brought in so much of transformation in me and to tell you an incident at the beginning when i was Uh, driving to the institution i was receiving phone calls in my car and when i reached uh, to the office i had some known faces some unknown faces and all the office wearers were waiting to greet me with their resignation letter i had to make a decision in 30 seconds whether i take these people who i don't know there was no reason for me to trust them or untrust them because i had a cpmt to conduct which unfortunately did not have a very good history in few weeks of that time but in 30 seconds something within me said and it reminded me that if you really want trusted people you need to trust in the people and believe me it was uh, one of the outlier cpmts 9 days we declared the result and uh, it was only because of these people who toiled hard and what with me with the external environment thereafter i made a principle in my life that don't question anybody trust even if somebody outsmarts you don't stop trusting people because if you trust somebody he may outsmart you once but over a period of time it would uh, it he he has to mend his way i had much bigger crucibles in my life uh, but no none bigger than king george's like uh, at the age of 62 i entered the business school one of the best business schools in the united states that was a totally different that crucible taught me how to work 
with smartest people than you in a class of 52 there are about 32 people ceos of big companies and uh, that's how you have to take them every time you are in a very difficult situation please withhold that temperature for some time and you will see that you will come out stronger with some more quality so there are many other institutions I work with. The point I want to make is whenever you don't think that it is, it is the right time for you or it is something has gone wrong, something you don't like, wait for a while. It will turn into gold in no period of time and you will come much stronger. I at least believe that we have two people living, residing within us. There is an idiot within inside of each one of us. And there is a child within. And my request to you is keep killing this idiot of yours and keep your child respective of your, the respective of your, what you call the chronological age, keep the child within. Because child is spontaneity, child is honesty, child is integrity. And that is what we, we should do. So portability of talent so I, I think KDMU is a reservoir of uh, talent. It has provided so many directors, illustrious medical people, 15,000 strong alumni in the United States in really key positions. And mind you, they all carry the, the, the culture of Lucknow to help others. So you can really build human capital irrespective of um, what you call carry with you. You can carry your strategy, you can carry your networking and um, qualities with you wherever you go, it is applicable everywhere. And fortunately, our domain knowledge, it is not like that you are going from hardware industry to software industry. It is wherever you go, you will go to a medical institution. Now, it is all about your identity. Identity is something we decide the label, we become judge and jury, which is not right. What you are in these days, initially we used to talk in conferences 30 years ago that I am so and so, I have done so much of work. These days that culture has vanished. If somebody is seriously meeting you, he's giving name to a face, face to a name, so sort of thing. He has read everything about you. He knows everything about you. So we in our part of the world need to really nurture our identity by not judging ourselves or relatively judging ourselves against somebody you obviously see. Our professors and teachers need to benchmark themselves against the best in the country and the world rather than keeping a low-hanging target of comparing yourself that and trying to count on somebody. This is a big conflict you often hear that I made so-and-so department in KGMU. It's true. Nobody disputes. And if you have done so truly, people will remember it. But certainly don't forget what institution has given to you. I can quote the examples of the institute. I went to Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore for the first time. That is a role model institution for me. And I was sitting in professor's chamber and I said that what did the institute provide to you? Because in those days I was looking for what should I provide to my department in, in terms of physical infrastructure. And they said Indian Institute provides nothing. Even the chair you are sitting is through my research grant. They provide only the address. And that is true for many institutions in the United States. So don't forget that institution gives you an address which lives you even after you live for that. Now, essentials of leadership, I will not take you into theory, but what I'm trying to say that leader, one word of leader, is, the function is how can you empower people? How can you inspire people to do things which otherwise they would not be able to do? And it is not for you to tell them, I made you to do. They, these people will remember you all throughout your life. And so it's an indirect advantage. You should have a decisive, distincting, and compelling voice. Sense of integrity is totally uncompromising. You may do things under the camera, 
but everything is known in my 30 20 years in up i can tell you never ever thing and that's why i never believed in secrecy or minimizing the secrecy because there was nothing your life should be open book whether people like it or not but that is something which uh, one has to train similarly high ethical standards because mind you the responsibility you have students everybody would follow your ethical standards and that is very important for you to consider and introspect so you have to strengthen your limbic system and i'm sure many of you know limbic system is spontaneous genuine signal stress and the body language you can make out you can't give a public face and private face you have to uh, it, it is a clue to body language whatever you are shows on your face leaders cannot be they can be quiet but inside them there should be a sense of urgency life is not 100 years and you can't really say that oh it's a simple thing we'll do that but certainly you don't show urgency because your face cues would give direction to the whole community of people you lead if you show your stress on that they will judge the thing now comes every leader has to have quality of decision making and here again i'll give one example which impressed me the most how abraham lincoln used to make a decision and i'll recommend for those who are no who have not read the very big book but what they call the the army of um, rivals abraham lincoln was known to keep rivals with him and his way of making decision is there would be a decision making process of his own analysis wherein he'll take opinion from the people who will contradict him who would be opposing him to make his own firm decision which would be a pretty long protracted period of decision making but moment he has made a decision once heavens would fall but he'll not give up his decision so yes i can see the instinct for all of us to become a leader i will qualify it by telling that it is not the leader but how do you become a charismatic leader win the hearts of your followers not by any other means by genuinity you have to look into their needs and they would really be grateful to you for helping them make make people feel special and that is very important that you give undivided uh, attention to the people uh, listen to them and it's all listening game of listening you don't have to do anything i can tell you we are all deal with the patients and the stories you just listen to them and that 50% 60% job is done choose right words and that teaches you how you should be aware of selecting right language and be sincere to the problem we understand these institutions are 100 years old all problems you cannot solve but if you are sincere to a problem people will understand that you did your best listen to the body language what you should talk what you should not take for a, a experienced leader it should not take more than 17 seconds this the studies to show to understand what the other guy is what is going on in his mind is he honest to what he's talking or he's making up all these body cues as leaders we need to learn and create a strong personality there is very little i don't think you can create it you can nurture a strong persona over a period of time now there are two kinds of leaders you will find them one of them just manage to survive they don't want to do because change means it comes with a whole lot of dowry and baggage moment you ask anybody to change a little human nature doesn't accept it easily so one is one kind of people i call them they just manage themselves another manage institutions and one of the quotes of dr mathai the first director of indian institute of management uh, it's very close to my heart is either you can either you can make an institution or you can use an institution choice is yours what would you like to do so changing things is taking but definitely the growth parameter is attached to changing 
it's not the changing for the sake of changing all organization needs a change and you should not you should not um, shirk from management change things even if it is opposed or fought with adversity um, this was a big challenge that it was a privilege of vice chancellor to have security guards in back and forth and one of my very senior person i told him that i don't like because in principle it keep me away from the people i want to be with them but they said that no there is a risk so i said let it be a professional hazard rather than keeping away so adversity is something hand in glove you cannot make 100% of people to agree with you and you should not end your to do because i don't think majority majoritarianism has help anywhere but what i would like to say that if you take these positions you should do another important thing is rather than somebody uh, putting your highlights into newspaper because uh, if you are not in the newspaper at least in our time they will call and say that are you okay or are you not in town or something but rather than getting surprised that your weaknesses they publish by researching against you you should know your weaknesses and no morning newspaper headline should really make you to do transparency easier said than done but transparency is some human trait which appeals to the subordinates so you have to really endeavor to do transparency now this is a very very nice quote of andre agassi everybody knows the um, all time tennis champion more you can remove emotion the more i would say don't remove but manage your emotions efficiently you can be an inch away from winning but still miles away if you allow emotions to interfere with the last step there are so many things that can distract you from taking care of it whatever is the change management process you have uh, uh, it once it's only the question of beginning the change management rest of it takes care of itself so don't bother about big changes change is such a process that you start and move the smallest domino and let it be an automatic process you don't have to become anything you don't have to tell you don't need an administrative crutch to say that i am a leader you listen to me these administrative positions if anybody has to use anywhere to say that i am head of the department means this is your first you have used the last ammunition act as a leader your behavior should be inbred with a leader and think like a leader and uh, this is again one of the very illustrious business school professor who has written a book on this so we have to get out of do we and have a paradigm we do work hard we become something and then have it to go from that to be start believing in what you want to be do and then have everything looks very very rosy till you ride that chair particularly these administrative position one has to really reach to the top to see what it looks like to be on the top always the inbreeding has bothered me one has to really there are reasons for you to stay in one place but at least for youngsters there should be india needs a lot of migration of talent to other institutions people taking leads and cultural thing and for that you need to really have a vision to create a bridge for you rather than losing total marketability for you in the place you are in company everywhere you know and go 
Shoshin is a Zen term which is known for childlike behavior. And this is very important that and that's why many of you would know that we always say that whenever you meet somebody, wipe out your old good or bad impression. You should always meet them as if you are meeting for the first time. And that is what is the meaning of Soshi. This is one of my favorite things that in order to really add value to it, whether you are in a private organization or in public institution like KGMU, you have to ask a question every morning to you that what value you are bringing to the institution or whatever you are doing. If you are finding that you are becoming static, pivot it. Do something and pivot your career uh, like a basketball player changes its position, keeping one foot on the ground. And according to me, my message is pivot or stultify. Either, either you'll decimate or keep learning new things. Learning doesn't age. And let me tell you, chronological age is not a deterrent to your learning. In fact, you are physically more fit if you, if you learn. One more thing that always we are happy with the people who listen to us. But coming to United States, I have found that people like to have more knowledgeable people or smarter people around them. And there is a strategy. They may not like them, but they still like to have taller people. You should, you, if you are in company of taller people, you or career is made, you will never cease to learn. They'll argue with you. They'll expose you for what you don't know. And that is the kind of culture and stimulation you need. This is my favorite slide. That collaboration is the key to medical institutions, whether it is administrative collaboration or scientific research collaboration. Take this uh, orange field, orange, and everybody focuses at the mesh of the orange, the substance. Nobody bothers about the peel. Same thing happens in research collaboration. Everybody fights for the substance of the orange because nobody wants to take this and that's where the fight is so as a democratic country we are the best way is let us divide the orange into half and half that is not the best solution according to me mark my words if there is a fight next time pick up the peel and there are 45 ways you can use orange peel so you can make worse, best out of worse, but don't quarrel for something which is obvious because gold lies in something hidden in sites which is not obvious. So I think I am coming to the last thing. Leadership is in work in progress. Want to put a disclaimer. Don't think that I have imbibed all these qualities. I'm still going through the crucibles of hardship to be a better leader. It's a work in progress, but it is really fun because everything teaches you something which is better. Uh, thank you very much once again for having invited me for uh, this wonderful day and wishing you all a happy Teacher's Day. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for ultimate oration. And uh, we can say a true leader always takes initiative to motivate his colleagues and fellows. And an important point uh, we will follow that be grounded is an utmost important point. As despite being a king and a supreme, Lord Krishna lived his life in simplicity. So now I would like to request uh, the moderator of this session, Professor Arun Chaturvedi, sir, to please come up. A very good morning to the audience. And a very happy Teacher's Day. Good evening to you, sir, Professor Bandari. Uh, it must be night over there in the United States and uh, my respects and my sincere and warm regards to you. I hope you remember me from the time you were here and uh, I'm still very much here and uh, it is a pleasure to see you and hear you. And this was one of the best uh, lectures Arun, ever. Arun, uh, I will interrupt you that... Uh... I remember still first time I, you were introduced to me by late my friend Professor N.C. Mishra at Jodhpur Airport, if you recall. 
Oh yes. <laughs> much much before I joined you at KGM. Yes, uh, we have I a know lot. you very well. So it has been a pleasure to hear you, sir. And I know that there is a lot of theory to leadership, but you actually showed how a true leader behaves. Uh, you actually put it to practice. And there were so many parts of this lecture which I really enjoyed, and your ideas. Uh, I think as time is passing, I think becoming assuming leadership in higher education is becoming probably I would say more and more difficult. Or basically, it's a thing which is in transition. Uh, maybe we are in a government institution here, and here we have the financial protection of a government. But I think elsewhere also, especially with uh, more and more higher education getting privatized and even medical education, there are a lot of challenges and pressures on uh, administrators and you know, people who are in the higher echelons. And it has become a challenge both to acquire and have the competencies of leadership as well as those managerial skills which includes financial management and so many other things to make a success story. I would say in the United States, you would, might be seeing that there's an entirely different environment to how medical education and higher education in general is working. In India also gradually more and more private medical institutions are coming there. Assuming leadership in those challenging roles is quite difficult. So, uh, my question is, how do you make both these, how do you acquire both these qualities? And since as a, as a head of department or as a professional, you may be having some managerial skills for a smaller place, but how do you develop those skills to reach a situation where you have to manage a whole institution? And along with it, a host and of problems of all kinds. I'll tell you, Arun, a very simple, what you said is totally true. And one thing you have to believe in that you don't do anything, things happen. And they happen because of, number one, your intent. There may be a very fierce opposition. There may be a vehement uh, criticism. There may be threats to your life. Nothing happens. But if there is a sincerity of purpose, if you are firm in your decision making, and if you are gentle in understanding other viewpoints, you can do anything. It doesn't matter because people manage for you. You think the prime minister of a country is an individual. Similarly, the vice chancellor of a university. Thousands of events contemporaneously take place. It is, it is the people who manage what the question is, how the leader manages his people. Are they undercutting him or are they really serving his purpose? And that is the challenge. So I think what you said is fine. That And don't think that, as I said, it's not bed of roses. It may appear so, but it's always a situation. And that's why I would suggest, I would think of that if you really grow your leader when you are nothing as a student, if you have, I'm not talking of becoming student union president and all. Yes, I would say, provided unanimously the whole class wants or college wants you to be the president, means you have inbuilt qualities of leadership. So always you have to nurture your inner human being, which would turn out to be a leader second to none. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that does ask, answer so many of my queries. I mean, essentially, if you are genuinely a good person and you have the skills and you're honest, your the integrity is good and you want to do everything with some kind of good intent at heart, things finally do work out. And managing big institutions is all the more challenging because you have to deal with so many kinds of people. There are people who are who, who are highly motivated in the institution and there are who are not so much motivated and they may be actually detractors. I, I mean, it's difficult to please everyone, like you said, it's, and it's impossible to do it if one should not try to do, try to please everyone. 
but even things which you consider should be disciplinary uh, activities, they land you up into a lot of opposition. It's so I think your strength at that point of time matters. And I think you must have faced situations like this where you have to take unpleasant actions. See, at the conclusion of uh, your comment is pertinent, but my take on it at the end of the day, I don't think anybody is useless or a troublemaker in an institution. It's a mismatch. If you, if you want to tell a football player to go and play tennis, he's a mismatch. And it is, again, leader's quality to find out how can you find the right match of work for him to keep them busy. You have to interact with them, talk to them. I don't, I don't uh, believe that 100% of them you can turn around, but quite a lot of them, you have to understand what is that is bugging. Some of them need some power. Some of them need importance. Some of them needs to, and some of them don't even know what they need. You have to find out from them by trial and error. Would you be interested in doing this? Would you be liking to do? And I can tell you, you can convert a lot of them. But if you go with the premise of your impression that so-and-so is troublemaker or useless, um, um, then probably you are getting disturbed with the trouble they are making because the dissidence is one of the major things of organization. Question is, Yes, in India, it gets ugly uh, dissent. Uh, they can go to any extent. But here, the dissent is a voice dissent, which they said, I'll never agree with you kind of thing. And they have their own logic. So I think the best principle is to not to consider anybody useless. If you are really a uh, leader who wants to make the best of what you have. So I think you have to really expose them to the indirect strategic ways to show them that if he says he's the best, he still not help. Expose him to a specialist who's truly the best and they will they will really learn. So it's a, it's a very arduous exercise, but it's most of a human interaction issue which you have to deal with. Yes. So I have a question from the one of the people in the audience. Uh, it's sometimes you feel your efforts are not being listened to and it's not, things are not moving, moving and these things send you into a state of frustration. How do you deal with such situations where there is some kind of log jam to your efforts? Frustration is a kind of emotion, uh, not that anybody can, but I think you should put it on occipital lobe and not, don't encourage frustration because Say, if you have planned something and your efforts are in the direction, only three things I can say. You have not chosen the direction rightly. There are questions. You have not done the due process of finding what you should be doing with your team. There would be opposition. There may be, you know, the most of the differences and how to do it, not on that. Who would challenge that KGMC should have a new department, there may be 20 questions on how to do it. So number one, your selection is not right. Number two, your approach is not right. Otherwise, and the third thing is you should be quitter. If you find out something you have picked up and you genuinely feel it shouldn't be done, withdraw back and say that, look, we will not do it. But whenever you are doing change and growth, you have to be very careful of the opposition simply because human nature is human nature is very difficult to change even if you i move you from this chair and give you a golden chair in the next door you will think twice that what is the trap inside so the human mind is very difficult to change so you have to convince them on a change and growth means it has to you have to constantly change things dynamically thank you sir now I request Professor Arun Chaturvedi, sir, to please uh, present a token of respect to Honorable Padmashri Professor Bhandari, sir. So we would like to present a token to you, sir. This is a virtual token, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I'm honored and uh, so nice of you. It has been a privilege to hear you, sir, and to see you virtually. I hope we'll have an opportunity to meet sometime in the future.
don't Look worry up. whoever this i am going to pick up this original thing moment this covid is over <laughs> so divya better be careful and don't give me a copy i want originally signed by honorable vice chancellor it would be honor so keep my certificate with you thank you very much thank, thank you. you sir thank you very much sir.